Well, good morning, church. Once again, it is Pastor Christian here. Thank you so much for joining me in this morning's devotional. And today we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 21. 1 Samuel 21. So if you have your Bible with you, you can turn with me there now. And as you turn there, let me catch you up on, on the back story. At the end of chapter 20, David learns from his good friend Jonathan that King Saul is in fact trying to kill him. And so David is now on the run. He doesn't head home to grab a weapon or to grab food. He's just on the run for his life because he knows that King Saul is after him. And so that's where we're at. And let's jump in. 1 Samuel chapter 21. Here's what we read. David went to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? So David hightails it to a, a city called Nob, which is right outside of Jerusalem. It's a priestly city, and this is where the, the tabernacle was located at this time. So David approaches the high priest, who was Ahimelech. Let's continue reading. David answered Ahimelech the priest, The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread, or whatever you can find. So David lies. And he says, oh, I'm on a mission with my men, but yeah, we, we don't have any food. Can you help us out? But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, indeed, women have been kept from us as usual whenever I set out. The men's bodies are holy even on missions that are not holy. How much more so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day it was taken away. And so the, the priest only has the consecrated bread, the, the show bread or the bread of the presence that was displayed before the Lord. And so the priest should not have given this bread to David, and yet he does. And David eats it. Now, we, we could have a whole other devotional uh, centered around the question, should David have eaten the consecrated bread or not? But we don't have time today, and so we're just going to keep it moving. All right. Verse 7. Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief shepherd. David asked Ahimelech, Don't you have a spear or a sword here? I haven't brought up my sword or any other weapon, because the king's mission was urgent. So David says, here I am on this mission for this king, this top secret mission, but oh yeah, I don't have a weapon. Kind of dubious, but let's keep reading. The priest replied, the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, there is no one like it. Give it to me. All right, so here we have... David, and he is on the run for his life. He's scared, he's anxious, probably feeling lonely, and ultimately just terrified because he knows that his, his life is on the line. And then it, it just happens that David stumbles upon the very sword that was used by Goliath when David took down Goliath. I, I mean... We could call this a coincidence, and some might, but I don't think that's what's going on at all here. You see, I think David runs into the sword of Goliath at this very moment because God wanted to communicate something, something really important to David in this moment. God was communicating to David by giving him this sword that, look, Dave, when you fought this giant Goliath, you were in way over your head. And you were overwhelmed, and your life was on the line, and yet you received victory. And yet, through my strength and by my help, you were able to, to come through. And so, God was saying to David in this moment, Look, Dave, in the same way that I was faithful to you against this deadly giant, against Goliath, I'm going to continue to be faithful to you moving forward. What a gift from the Lord, right? When David was at the height of his anxiety and fear, this, this reminder of all that God had brought him through thus far. 
Church, what we need to understand today is that God uses the spiritual battles of our past to help us fight in the present. Our past victories need to become our present weapons. So let me explain how this works. If you have a little bit of time later today, you got some free space in your day, I would recommend getting out a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, I would create a timeline. Create a line going all the way across it. Start on the day of your birth and end it right now in the present. And before the Lord, in His presence, you can begin to pray and ask the Lord to to remind you of episodes in your life in which the Lord has given you victories, in which the Lord has brought breakthrough, brought answered prayer, brought deliverance. Perhaps you can remember times in your life where you desperately needed provision and the Lord brought it. Or times in your life where you were struggling with depression or loneliness and the Lord provided you with friends or helped you get out of that that pit of despair. Certainly you would want to put the the day or the season of your conversion on there. Where have there been times in your life where you just felt in over your head, you were overwhelmed, and yet the Lord provided, the Lord brought you victory. Where have there been times in in which you just thought, this is it, this is the end of me, in which God graciously intervened. And and then friends, I, I would take that timeline, and I would fold it up, and the next time you're you're in a place of just feeling overwhelmed. Next time you're in a place where all hope seems lost, where you're anxious, where you're fearful, could be later today. I want you to bring that timeline before the Lord, and I want you to hold it up before Him. And I want you to say to the Lord in that moment as you pray, Father, this, this timeline is, is living proof, is proof that, that you've been faithful to me in the this timeline is proof that you you have given me victory in the past. This, this timeline is proof that I have been in over my head before, and yet you created a way. You opened the door. You brought the breakthrough that I needed. Over and over again, here, here is testimony that you have brought me freedom and breakthrough when I absolutely needed it. And so in the same way, that you were faithful to me in the past, Father. I am going to right now believe that you're going to be faithful to me moving forward. In the same way that you brought answered prayer in the past, I believe that you're going to bring answers to my prayer. In the same way that you brought deliverance and breakthrough, I believe that these things are coming for me. Friends, our, our, our past victories have to become our present weapons. God has brought you through treacherous waters in the past, in part that you might use those past experiences to fight your battles now. And so friends, let us not lose hold of this truth that our past victories need to become our present weapons. David was in over his head. He was overwhelmed. And what did God do? He brought the sword of Goliath. This reminder that that God was still with David just like him, like he was in the previous years. So friends, I I hope that is an encouraging word for you today. I I pray that you would create that timeline and that you would use those past victories to fight now in the present. Would you fight for joy? Would you fight for peace? Would you fight for hope? Remembering that we serve a faithful God. God bless you, church, and I'll see you tomorrow.